Tiny police cells are present in the blood to protect a person from germs that cause infections such as TB and the flu. These police cells are called CD4 cells. HIV harms the body by attacking the CD4 cells and making the body more prone to other illness causing germs. The good news is that a person with HIV who lives a healthy lifestyle, gets regular medical care and takes medication can live for 25 years or more after infection. However, the individual who fails to take these steps will experience a series of infections, lose weight and usually die within 10 to 12 years. How does HIV is transmitted? Let's look at Ms. S's life, for example. HIV can be transmitted through three ways. Blood from one person entering that of the other person. It can either be through blood transfusion or through shared needles. Yo, what's up, man? Hey, man. You know, I just hope my wife doesn't know about this, man. It's okay. I don't think she will. Secondly, exchange of fluids during copulation. The risk is higher for those who exchange partners. In this case, Ms. S's husband are having an affair Why with another so person. Today? Well, you know, I got work, I got meeting, it gets too technical, big, but you know what? We forget it all, because today we got party all night. Number three, a cross placenta from mother to fetus or in breast milk. In this case, Ms. S will be pregnant and the HIV will be passed on to the baby. You don't say. Acute HIV infection. At some time during the first month or so after HIV enters the body, a person may have a flu-like illness. Symptoms may include fever, fatigue, rash, headache, swollen lymph nodes, and sore throat. Some people have no symptoms at all. The viral levels at this time are very high because at first, the body is unable to fight the virus. During this time, the HIV antibody test is negative. This is called the window period. Within about one to two months, the body begins to produce antibodies to fight the virus and viral levels drop. The rapid HIV antibody test detects these antibodies, not the virus. A blood test can be done in the hospital or clinic to measure how many CD4 cells a person has. This test is called the CD4 count. During this time of acute HIV infection, the CD4 count goes from a normal level of 1,200 down to about 900. The viral levels at this time are very high because at first, the body is unable to fight the virus. Within about one to two months, the body begins to produce antibodies to fight the virus and viral levels drop. After the initial infection, the body can effectively fight the HIV for about five years. This period is called stage one. During this time, the CD4 police cell levels drop from about 900 to 500. At the same time, the HIV levels in the blood slowly rise. Although generally symptom-free, a person in this stage can still pass the virus onto others. From about 6 to 9 years after infection, a person is in stage 2 of HIV infection. During this phase, the CD4 count may go down from about 500 to 350. At the same time, the HIV levels in the blood slowly rise. Swollen glands appear in the neck, armpits or in the groin. A person may feel weak and tired and experience fevers and weight loss. 
the number of CD4 cells is now so low that other germs that cause infections find it easier to invade the body. This makes it so flus, coughs and colds, skin rashes, shingles, fungal nail infections and mouth sores become more common in this stage. After about 9 to 11 years of HIV infection, the CD4 count drops below 350 and the person enters stage 3. HIV viral levels continue to increase. In addition to all earlier symptoms listed, a person may have abdominal pain, ongoing diarrhea, cough and headaches. Additionally, painful blisters of the mouth or genitals may happen again and again. Within about 11 or 12 years of HIV infection without medical treatment, a person enters stage 4. Another name for stage 4 is AIDS. The CD4 count drops below 200 and the body begins to lose its long battle against HIV. Viral levels are high in the blood. Severe life-threatening infections occur in this stage. So how do we prevent and control HIV? Socially, we should help nationwide awareness, promote usage of condoms, avoid having multiple partners and needle exchange scheme. Economically, according to the UN Secretary General Trust Force on HIV AIDS in Southern Africa. HIV Prevention Program for Migrants Educational and vocational training programs for women Provide a supportive environment for people with HIV Implement prevention programs in public and private work sectors Use antiretroviral drugs to inhibit HIV blood from donors Contact tracing People with HIV are asked about how they were infected Treatment for other infections which develop in AIDS More than 34 million people now live with HIV AIDS Almost over 23 million of them are in Africa 3.3 million of them are under the age of 15 In 2011, an estimated 2.5 million people were newly infected with HIV 330,000 were under the age of 15 Every day, nearly 7,000 people contract HIV, nearly 300 every hour. In 2011, 1.7 million people died from AIDS. 230,000 of them were under the age of 15. Since the beginning of the epidemic, more than 60 million people have contracted HIV and nearly 30 million have died of HIV-related causes. Here's a fun fact, it's likely that the chimpanzee's blood entered the man's bloodstream through a small cut or scratch that first causes HIV. Problem? The disease, which is believed to have originated from primates in West Central Africa, continued to spread rapidly over the years since 1930s. So now we know how to fight HIV?